Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. We're back, welcome to Knowledge 15 everybody. This is Dave Vellante, I'm with my co-host Jeff Frick, the original That's right. Cube Knowledge uh, Cube team. Uh, back together, Jeff, thanks for, for coming on. Carl Vanderpool is here, he runs the performance analytics business at uh, ServiceNow. ServiceNow's first acquisition, Amir 42, a couple years ago. So, you know, Carl, welcome to the Cube, it's good to see you again. Nice to, uh, thanks for having me. Great. So how's it going? Not lots going on here at this event. 9,000 people, new business units announced this year. You're in charge of one of them, the analytics, hot space. We, we met you a couple years ago and we were like, wow, what a great fit with ServiceNow. All of a sudden, you know, acquisition, you're here, rocket ship, how's it feel? Yeah, it's feeling great. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been a great ride ever since the acquisition. Uh, we, uh, we got acquired July 1st, 2013, and uh, it's been booming ever since. So especially the last two releases. Um, now that we're in platform, um, we, we see great adoption by customers and it's really taking off, so it's amazing. You know, M&A in the um, technology business obviously is a, a, a core discipline and strategy of many companies. Some are good at it, some are not so good at it. It's interesting to note ServiceNow acquisitions, you've got to be part of the ServiceNow framework yeah. or it's not going to work. No. And so, it's a, it's there's a nice feeder system, a farm system, if you That's will, right. for service now. But so, I wonder if you could talk about go back and talk about the acquisition, uh, the the integration, the the, the and, and what that was like. Yeah, sure. Um, so one of the things that was 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 pretty uh, strange actually. Normally, if you do an acquisition, like y you buy a product and you go start selling that product. Well, with service now, they got this one platform, one code base uh, vision. So. The question that I got uh, during the negotiation and the talk was like, hey Carl, are you up for a rebuild? And I was, my first response was like, are you kidding me? You know, we've, we spent five years building a great product. Um, and then they start explaining this whole, you know, benefits of being in platform. It was like, all right, sounds like a plan. So we did it. And uh, um, so we did the rebuild in platform. Um, and that was actually great. Well, I think one of the best things that we deal with ServiceNow is, um, you acquire a company and, and, and you ask them to start building on your stack, your technology, which was not necessarily our technology. You know, Mirror 42 was building a different technology stack. So there was a big learning curve. And obviously we didn't know the platform that well. Uh, my engineers didn't know the platform. So what we did, uh, what ServiceNow did is, you know, we got a couple of the platform guys out of San Diego, relocated them to Amsterdam, embedded it in a team. And that basically caused for, you know, very rapid knowledge transfer. Um, and, and allowed us to pull it off uh, to rebuild the product in right. platform. Um, and that was just great. I mean, the, the executive team is great. Um, I think there's some kind of privilege you know, by being the first acquisition. We were the first. Um, so there's a lot of attention on it. Service now didn't you know, want to make sure it obviously succeeded, you know, being your first acquisition. So I get to meet all the leadership people, which also kind of helps you. Uh, after that period on in order to get things done and get things moving in the right direction. So here you are, a small company. Very small. Acquired by a larger company, not a, not a total whale, but a larger company with yep. a much bigger distribution channel. What kind of momentum have you seen post? Well, literally hundreds of customers, right? Uh, you know, we, used, we got acquired and we, we were a small company, like you said, you know, in the canals in Amsterdam, 20 people strong. And uh, a couple of, you know, we just got started with ServiceNow. And we, basically what happened was you know, when ServiceNow opened up their Econet for partners and they released the ODBC driver, it allowed us to start connecting to it. And, and we thought that ServiceNow might have an appetite for, you know, acquiring somebody in this space. Um, but we didn't realize that it went that fast. It was really, really, really fast. We signed up all the partners. We were, we were signing up partner or customers, but we didn't have that many ServiceNow customers yet uh, And when the acquisition came. Right. So if, if you now look, you know, you, you were, were, were two years out, right, or a year and a half out, and uh, uh, yeah, like I said, literally hundreds of customers uh, in the Eureka platform um, are, have purchased performance analytics, are rolling it out, and we're, we're we're ramping up capacity in the field, which is which is you know, the, the big challenge for us. You know, you, you get a couple hundred customers in one year, and obviously you also need to have the, the, the consultants in the field in order to to be able to support that. Right. Um, that's really uh, 
it's really what we're what we're going for right now. It's like it's cranking too up bad the capacity. You did have the, the time machine because Fred was on earlier yesterday talking about talking to Google and they completely rewrote their entire search uh, code base. So if you'd known, you would have said, "Hey, we're rewriting that thing." But <laughs> but it also kind of frees you up to write it up the second time, right? Yeah. Because your is a forcing function, so it gives you an opportunity to maybe rethink some things, yeah, fix absolutely. some things, and really look at your your. Uh, your application with really fresh eyes. Yeah, it was actually it was the second rewrite that we did because we started with Mirror 42 as an on-premise normal software vendor. So we did the rewrite in the cloud, and then we did the rewrite again in the ServiceNow platform. So you know, and you're absolutely right. You know, you, you you're going to get better every time you do it. Right. So, um, and the power of the platform obviously is you know we get a lot of stuff for free, right? You know, we didn't have to worry about you know security layers. We didn't have to worry about integration interfaces. We, you know, it's already there. So. I mean, there are, there are a lot of things that we need, do need to worry about, but, but the power of the platform was, was very, very So you very were writing strong. originally in a public cloud? Is that right? Yeah. Oh, well, originally on-premises. Right. And then a public cloud. Yeah, on AWS. So yeah. AWS, basically, here it is, go. Right. Yeah. Which API, you, and it's cool. I mean, right. But developers love it. But developers love it, and it's very cheap. And it's DevOps. And right. But um, um, actually, in, the, the public cloud for, for ServiceNow customers, for some ServiceNow customers, is a no-go area. So we knew that with Mirror 42 on AWS, we, we would not be able you know, to, to get to all the customer base. Um, because you know, just the big banks will not, will not do analytics on the public cloud, right, uh, right. rightly so. So, um, so yeah, you know, also in order to reach the entire customer base, and especially the big customers, you know, the in-platform move was a good one. So well, that's interesting. So w w w what's what was it like developing on the ServiceNow cloud comparative to the AWS piece? Um, I mean, you had to worry about scaling in yeah, AWS. Well, I remember the first time I actually, we, we, had, we have these, these technology sessions at ServiceNow. I remember the first quarter I came in and you know, we, we had a, a big team meeting with Alan's guys, Alan Leinwand and, and, and Pat, Pat Casey guys, and, um, and we got all the people in there. And, and the first thing that struck me is like, wow, what a brain power in this room. It was just literally amazing. You know, people that are, that are holding your back while you're building an application and you do not have to worry about scaling the database, right? You do not have to worry about failover or running the operations monitoring or anything. It's like, you know, you build your app and obviously we're an analytics app, so it could, you know, a lot of data flows through the system, right? So scalability is always something you need to think about with analytics. But you know, if you have that kind of guys holding your back on the platform, it's it's really an amazing experience. So, I, I think we didn't have the feeling like we were we were alone on it. It's like there was a lot of support, um, and and you know, great guys, great brains, and it, it's uh, it was pretty was pretty easy actually. Yeah. I wonder if we can shift gears a little bit and talk about analytics sure. and how analytics has changed over time. Yep. And especially, you know, we talked a little bit off camera about kind of in-platform analytics versus maybe more of a traditional approach of of having the data and then putting it into a different analytics yeah. tool. Talk about how that's changing and really how that's driving different use cases and, and we talk quite a bit on theCUBE of getting that data, that information, that actionable insight down to people yeah. that are making decisions in real time and out of the hallowed halls of the, big, of the data scientist who's uh, just down the hall. Yeah, and you know, analytics is a, is, a, is a buzzword, right? Every, you know, everybody calls everything analytics. Oh, big data is right? the buzzword. Oh, big data. <laughs> right. I always say I want a small summary. <laughs> a small summary, very good. It's like, you know, it sounds like a management nightmare, <laughs> big data. But, um, um, a small summary. So, like you know, so analytics is a big thing. What, what, what we mean with analytics serves now is, is really, you know, you want to be able, if you orchestrate your workflows, you know, in service now, whatever process it is, right, you know, the theme of this conference is everything as a service. So you want to optimize the process of delivering that service. And in order to do that, you got to crunch the numbers, figure out, you know, what's not working, where, where do, how you can optimize that process, where things are getting stuck. Um, and that needs to be done, you know, in real time, right? It, 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 you do not want to have, you know, exporting that data out, putting it somewhere else again, and there, there's always a delay. And the other thing that why why the ETL you know, process doesn't work in our vision for for the platform is ServiceNow is a platform, so you're constantly changing things, right? That's the flexibility of the platform. People write their own apps, customize the apps. Well, guess what? If I if I customize an app, I do that for a reason, probably because I want to store data that is really important for me probably data that I want to report off. Well, if you then also need to fix the ETL layer again and then fix your data warehouse again, it, it kind of gets you know change after change after right, change. Right. 
if you do it in platform, you make the change in platform, and the platform is aware of the change, you know, we don't have that problem, right? So it's about you know, being there in real time and not having to worry about you know, keeping other systems that integrate in sync and, and, and have to worry about all that stuff. And so. that's interesting in the context of kind of the agile world that we live in, right? And back in the day, people weren't changing the software that often, right? They were doing major releases every now and then. Right. But now in, in the agile world, people are pushing out new yeah, code all exactly. the time. So that just must really exacerbate the problem that you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. So, so, and there is a use case for, uh, for you know, for extracting and putting it in. I mean, we are not, um, we understand at ServiceNow that not all data of the entire enterprise is in ServiceNow yet, right? Right. But right. so, so for consolidated reporting, really after the fact, you're crunching your your management reporting, and um, you know, th there is there is a consolidation play, and there will be a big data warehouse, and you put the data in. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're right. talking about, you know, cr crunching the numbers and the operational analytics to make the people who have to do the work give them the power of analytics to make better decisions when they do their job. You know, it's not not the, at the end of the month after the fact reporting. So let's let's unpack a little bit what customers are doing with your your product. So take us through a typical customer scenario. Maybe there are several, but just give us some examples so people can understand what we're talking about here. Uh, yeah. Um, so m the majority of the customers is now using performance analytics really on the operational side of the house. So we're looking at incident problem and change data and the requests that are coming in. Um, really doing like backlog analysis. So, you know, I have a backlog right now. I have the goal to reduce that in let's say 50% in four months. And then to figure out like with my current staffing, you know, where am I going to end up in four months from now if I don't do anything, right? And if I add capacity, how much capacity do I need to add in order to hit that goal? You know, those are kind of the things that we're doing. But it's also really doing implementing continuous improvement cycles. And what we mean with that is you have efficiency key performance indicators like percentage of untouched incidents. You know, it happens in every organization that you throw something in a workflow and it get lost somewhere, right? We don't want that to happen. Um, or tickets that are being reass reassigned too many times. So it comes to request, it's difficult, we don't know who the right specialist is, so we're going to throw it around as a whole potato, right? right? And, the, and the customer is waiting. So we're, you know, those are kind of like really the, the, the performance indicators that you, that you want to start you know, zooming in on, not only as an absolute number, but as a percentage of the overall traffic that flows through your process. So, and then you drive that percentage down. So the best way to actually hit the SLA is to make sure people are working on the right stuff. Um, and, and that's really where you, where you can set the efficiency indicators. Um, so those are, those are good examples, and um, very often it's also you know, used for uh, vendor management. So you outsource something to somebody else, you want to track the performance of that vendor over time. Um, so that, those are typical use cases. Okay, so um, do I get, so thinking about the operational analytics, do I get a sort of set of, you know, a little framework out of the box, yep. and then I can customize that, because my KPIs might be different than others, or is it pretty much standard? What are you seeing there? So, uh, that's a good question. We, what we, what we, we ship with about 80 key performance indicators out of the box, which are the, you know, the obvious ones. Um, but we also, what also came with the acquisition um, uh, is a community called kpilibrary.com. kpilibrary.com is about, has over half a million members and it holds over 6,000 templates for key performance indicators. Now, it's something that we haven't done that much about with the acquisition yet. Uh, it still sits there, it's the community is very live and active. Uh, but those templates, those 6,000 templates, are related to any kind of business process or industry. So we obviously take the ones for IT and we started there, but we also have them for HR, for facilities, for legal, and for any other industry. Um, so those templates, you can actually use those templates when you're setting up and customizing, adding your own KPIs. You can you can use that as a source of inspiration. Download the templates and and, and start setting up you know new KPIs uh, faster. So and that's faster. how it works. I download them. It's not like an API. In right. Template. You pull it in. It's a yeah. template. And the other thing that we're doing now, we're obviously seeing the HR and the, and the you know, portfolio management, all the other applications that we're building. We're building out of the box content to come along with it. So you know you'll see us. You know, we, we have an HR analytics, you know, to complement the HR solution. Project. Right. So, you know, that's what we started really with the operational ones because that's what the majority of customers obviously have. You know, they, they use uh, ServiceNow for instant problem change. And as we see more and more HR and more PPM, you know, we're, we're building those packages along. Well, HR makes a lot of sense. I mean, right. this is leverage and project especially. I mean, there must, I mean, 
everybody's just, you got KPIs and right and project you, things like earned value right. management. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So so that's what I was going to say. And project is a little bit different. And so you're trying to connect to other sort of value metrics. Yeah. I presume. It's highly customizable. I can set that stuff up. I yeah. can score however I want to score. I can tie it to my business objectives. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it basically if the data lives in the ServiceNow platform, you can you can snapshot it, you can slice or dice it any way you want. There's a formula editor that allows you to you know, calculate and, and do forecasting and, 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 and write those business rules. So it's very customized. So essentially, the Tiger team that came over from San Diego helped you get into the ServiceNow platform, so you can leverage the entire platform today. Yeah, out of the box. Yeah, we're very much, I mean, if you think about analytics and reporting, because reporting is the other the, the other thing that I do, we were very much joined to the HIP with platform, right? If, if I can't query it, I can't, yeah, I can't do anything with it. So, so the, 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 and the other, you know, so it's basically two parts, right? It's visualizing data, which is, we work very closely with Fred's group on the UI side, and then we have, you know, analyzing and soaring the big data numbers, which is very much the platform side. So those are the two peer groups that I have, and then, in. Our, the application teams, the teams of Dave Stevens, are basically my customers because they want to enrich their apps with analytics, or or three for that matter. You know, so those guys are my customers. They they kind of use and they and they build the content as well. So on one end, I'm building an app that we sell. On the other end, I'm actually building capabilities for the other uh, the other GMs. Really to, taking to, advantage of that whole advantage. platform kind of concept. Right. It's the better together concept. Yeah. yeah. What about the Viz? You know, we talk about the Viz. We, go, we do Tableau show. We always talk about the Viz. So the visualization is pretty much everything you guys do in-house, right? Or do yeah. you connect to other visualization tools? Yeah, well, what we do is, you know, we ship a bunch of standard visuals that we have, you know, optimized for time series, and, and um, but we're also a platform again, so anything in PA, in, in forms analytics, is built on top of a rich API set. So customers can take, you know, any kind of visualization engine or, or a scripting language like D3 and start writing their own visualizations on top of those APIs. So we see that happening as well. Mm -hmm. um, for this conference, we had a, we built up a, a custom dashboard on, you know, to follow all the social events, all the right. tweets every right. two minutes. And, um, and we also have a, a little example and pulling data from the stock market in. And, um, but those are all examples of how you can do custom visuals on top of the APIs. So what we ship is kind of like, well, you know, this is this is the basic stuff, right? Time series and, and bars and, and donuts and what what have you. Uh, but you can you can go really, you know, you can go really fancy with the APIs. Yeah, I want to shift gears a little bit, doing a little research before before you came on. You had an interesting piece on really the t you know the historical time bounds for reporting, yeah. which were quarterly, monthly, yeah. and and that was driven really kind of by the speed of reporting the, and the speed of the ability to get the information and put it together back from from however long ago that started. Yeah. And how really we shouldn't do that anymore because we have the ability to do it much quicker and in a much more logical way. I wonder if you can kind of share with sure. the audience that. I think it's pretty powerful. So so actually if you think about business intelligence then then unfortunately not much has changed in the last, you know, ten years. If you if you start asking customers or, or, or you know, or big organizations, how they do their management reporting. It's basically at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter, we crunch the numbers and then we look back and we say, it's like, oh, we, you know, we didn't hit our targets or UP, we hit our targets, right? But it, it, it's, it's really strange because we, we did that because it was so labor intensive to crunch the numbers more often, right? It was hard work. You got to pull the data in, you put it in a data warehouse, you got data analysts doing all the numbers, people questioning about data quality. Well. That's been going on for 10, 15 years, and and, and nothing has really changed. In, in custom, and some of the organizations are still doing that. But if you look at systems like like ServiceNow, it you can crunch the numbers every day, and instead of looking at a end of the month, you can start looking at a rolling 20-day average every day, right? Which basically gives you uh, the data of a month rolling forward. Um, and you can every day you can already do the analysis. Are we on track to hit our target? Or are we moving? In or the right are we direction? moving in the right direction? Right. And that obviously, if you start thinking about it that way, so you know, I, I sometimes you know, call it drop the calendar view, right? You know, start thinking about it's like, well, it doesn't really matter if it's Sunday, Monday, or you know, what does that mean? We've got a business who goes 24/7, 365. What does the calendar mean, right? Doesn't mean anything anymore. I just take in an X amount of time, and I trend it over time, and I want to see if, if I'm improving, if my organization becomes more efficient. And so we, we still have th this whole concept of, you know, calendaring and looking back, it's, it's I think. Because it's taxes. 
Right. So, right, right, right. <laughs> right. But, but there's one thing to report your taxes, yeah, and, and then there's taxes. another thing to manage your business, <laughs> and I guess that's really what now, the opportunity now, is. Carl, what are you typically replacing when you come in? Is it is it nothing? Is it spreadsheets? Is Excel. It, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a lot of Excel, and it's a lot of in-house. Um, I mean, when customers move from you know HP or BMC and they, they go to ServiceNow, um, uh, in the past they typically have done a lot of business warehouse kind of things with business objects or Cognos, you know, tools uh, on premise even. Um, and they, 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 most customers know how you know hard that is. I mean, they know it's like hard work to keep it in sync to do all that stuff. So when we show them that this thing is built in platform and they don't have to worry about it anymore. It's like, well, you know. So that's one use case. And, and the other thing is, w w with PA, we, we, we see customers who jump on PA, um, or performance analytics, I should say, um, they save a lot of time in gathering the data and crunching numbers in Excel. So what's mm. happening a lot is, you know, offloading the data to Excel, and everybody's a data jockey in Excel, right? And we all do that, but, you know, I do that at a different time than you do that, so we're not looking at the same data set, and therefore we draw this, you know, not the same conclusions. So, and that's really automating that process and not having to get that data out and basically doing it in platform is one of the big time savers. Mm. All right, we're out of time, but I wanted to leave, have you leave us with, with final thoughts. Um, let's look ahead, put on your binoculars, if you would. Hmm. We, we heard you talk about extending into other sort of modules and right. you know, lines of business. Um, we heard a lot about real time. What's the future hold for the, the, the performance analytics, specifically in the context of service management? Well, we'll continue what we're doing. So, so um, it, it's really about moving towards forecasting, predicting where you're going to go, um, but also making the analytics, um, and we're already doing that, but you know, we, we can do a lot more there, but making it really prescriptive, right? Telling people, you know, not only allowing managers to analyze what they need to do and optimize the process, but basically make the process uh, already uh, give give that power to the to the agents itself. So when you're doing your work, the analytics will tell you in order to prevent that we're actually you know reassigning tickets or or, or sending it the wrong direction. Um, so I think that the whole notion of you know, doing that thing in real time, you know, taking the historic data, mining the historic data, and profiling the data, and then overlaying it with what you need to do right now. That's that's where we want to go, and that's where I see the future. All right, Carl. Congratulations on the acquisition, the successful integration, and uh, uh, the new role <laughs> yep. at ServiceNow and all the, all the momentum. So appreciate you coming on theCUBE. All right, thank you. All right, thank keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Las Vegas. Knowledge 15. Right back. <laughs>